You brought some news. We always like people that bring the news. You made some acquisitions. Um, one of them is of uh, Action IQ to deliver the industry's first zero data AI cloud. I'm reading the headline. What does that mean? Well, it's great to be on your show, Frank. Uh, what Unifor has been all about is we're an AI native company, which means we were born doing AI. And for the last 16 years, we've been an end-to-end -end AI platform for over 1,500 of the top enterprises in the world. But if there's one thing we've learned in implementing AI for thousands of these companies is that deriving return on investments isn't a trivial matter for these enterprises using AI. And if I think about what are the top reasons that we hear about these AI initiatives stuck in a proof of concept and not in production, the number one reason is that these enterprises don't have their raw material, which is data, prepared in a way that these AI models and AI agents can start to consume that. And today, with our announcement, we decided we're going to change that. So we're announcing not one, but two major acquisitions in the data space. Action IQ, which is headquartered in New York, it's mm -hmm. a customer data platform company, and Infoworks.io, which is headquartered in Palo Alto, Silicon Valley, is a data automation company. And with these companies joining our AI platform, we are announcing a zero data AI okay. cloud. So that, that's enterprise. a little jargony though. So bottom line of course, we're gonna show some of your customers right now, you have a lot of big name customers. What does it mean for your customers? Well, that's a great point to get, get into. If I think about what does zero data AI cloud mean, it means zero friction with your AI initiatives, zero lock-in to any platform and sovereignty zero trust, data access, and secure. But let me make this real. Just a few days ago, I was in the boardroom of a major insurer, mm -hmm. where after my presentation, the CIO interrupts me and says, Omesh, if your assumption is that I first have to bring all my data in one place to benefit from AI agents, we should meet after three years from now, because that's the time it'll take me <laughs> to clear that uh, hurdle. And when I told him, Listen, with the preview of what's to come, we're going to announce zero data AI cloud. We're going to solve that problem for you. It won't take okay. you three years. It'll take you three so, months. So that's what it means. That's, By that's the way, we're means. showing your customers. Allstate's one of them. I don't know if that's who you're talking about, but that's a major insurer, obviously. Um, you were talking about friction. Let me tell you something. Uh, whether it's a co-pilot, an agent, I know those two terms are interchangeable. I feel like there's always friction when you have to use one of these things. Um, and one of the things that you offer is what's called emotion AI. So I was looking on your website. I thought this was interesting. Can emotion AI sense when I'm frustrated and I'm just like, I want to talk to a real person, I want to talk to a real person. Can it sense my frustration? Can it sense that I'm in a rush? What can emotion AI do? Well, Frank, I'm glad you're going in this direction. By definition, a lot of people don't understand this. Generative AI is designed to almost ignore the nuance of human emotion. It's designed to uh, be very intelligent about completing a mathematical sequence. You say, what comes after one and two? Gen AI will tell you three and four. What comes after this statement, it'll tell you the response to a chatbot. But human beings, when we talk to each other, whether it's a call center or a salesperson meeting you or you talking to a friend, we emote. We, and we emote by changing our tone, our facial expressions change, and I can raise my eyebrows, and you will know that I'm still you know, doubtful of what you just said to me. So emotion AI is a set of AI models dedicated, which have been trained by Unifor, to understand when a human being on a call center call is raising their voice and they're getting really frustrated. <laughs> Let's get the supervisor involved really quickly because this is not good for either party. Or right. if it's a salesperson pitching to you on a Zoom meeting, what does your facial right. expression tell them? I'm laughing because I, I could have used this yesterday. I had, I had to do something with like a, uh, an agent yesterday. I got beyond frustrated. Um, so you're clearly right now in a very red hot space. Just to make it clear, you're in the agent co-pilot space, whatever you want to call it. Um, after yesterday, uh, Salesforce's report, a lot of attention on these AI agents. What about your company? It's currently private. Are you thinking about going public? What's the outlook for your company to go public in 2025? Well, Frank, you take me in a very important direction, and clearly it's an important question. We are headquartered in Palo Alto, California, so even by Silicon Valley standards, Unifor is a late-stage private company. We're a unicorn, and we are ripe for being a pre-IPO candidate. Right now, in this snapshot of time, what I'm really focused on is, especially with today's announcement, Zero Data AI Cloud, we want to continue to deliver value to some of these big enterprises that you flashed on your screen and others. And if we continue to do that, just the way we have in the past, I think as Wall Street becomes more amenable to tech IPOs and as, you know, in the coming months, et cetera, we're going to see a lot of tech companies from Silicon Valley mm -hmm. get ready to file their papers. And there will be a time for Unifor as well. But right now, I'm getting my team okay. very focused on our customers. Umesh, well, we got to go. But one other question. New administration coming in, the idea of less regulation, more than likely Lena Khan leaving the FTC. 
Um, does that change your view on going public or any other part of your business in a meaningful way? Well, I, I think it's like everybody else. It's very hard to know yet what the new administration eventually does. There's a lot of sound bites, uh, less regulation, but also tariffs around the world. And all of those have major implications for AI. The good thing is nobody has monopoly on technology. We are a global business. We see usage of AI in 20 different countries. I can tell your viewers right now, U.S. is in the lead in, in a okay. big way. The whole world is looking at U.S. and Silicon Valley. Okay. But we'll have to wait and see what the new administration right. eventually does. Master, we got to leave the conversation there.